and uh, um, I did one thing that I got involved in school that didn't really take away main security, but it was interesting. I, um, and this, it was a very big part of my life. I, I heard about hypnosis and I was fascinated by hypnosis. And by the way, hypnosis is, if most of you know what hypnotism is, and it's a, a genuine mind science. It's a natural thing. There's nothing to fear about it. There's nothing sinister. It's tapping into the subconscious mind with programming suggestions to improve your life. And, and it's, um, a, a, in fact, everybody enters into a hypnotic state every 20 minutes. You know, you know when you flick it in and out, you drive it on the road and 10 minutes past, you said, where was that church on the corner that, uh, where have I been, you know? Something. So the ebb and flow of your conscious and subconscious is a natural part of your being. Um, and hypnosis, in a more specific sense, is, is a natural thing. I found an interesting study, I practice it, develop a skill, it's not a big deal, it's uh, just like any technique, and it becomes a central part of my um, focus. And, and as I learned the skill of hypnosis and learned focusing and being able to hypnotize a person or hypnotize myself if I do, um, I was able to be able to focus my mind and that focus become a part of who I am. So that flowed on to my desire when I was stuck in karate, a stick in karate, I was able to turn that into determination um, and, uh, and in the business things I've done in my life and started to go as a club to focus and focus. So I can directly see that the, the understanding of what hypnotism or hypnosis is, is just integral in a way and part of my success as a my adult life. Uh, anyway, I practice hypnosis, but look, um, I, at four, age 14, I repeat the second year high school, I got 7 out of 100 for geography, 13 out of 100 for metal work, and they said, look, oh, better get him out of here, he's not this, what's the future? My house is, my mum took me to a child psychologist down in Big Smoke in Sydney to check him out and see what, and the, the child psychologist said in front of me, well maybe the best if you expect he might dig holes or something like that, you know, he might be, you know, with, with his hands, you know, uh, and, and um, I don't forget how I took that, I don't know what was of it, um, but yes, when I left school I got into the post office, uh, delivering telegrams, Bicycle, I guess, I don't know if it ever happened over here, years ago, probably did. Um, and um, got out there after a couple of years, um, did odd jobs, worked in an abattoir, worked in uh, carpet lane, just different jobs, serving petrol. Uh, then I, um, my mum and dad said, because they were always staring at good, secure government job, they were very mainstream, you know, well, it was like, what else is it good? It was, you know, to start a bit. But we not only get a job at security, work in a bank, work in a government department, that, and that's, you know, well many parents often steer their kids towards it, don't they? It's not fine. But that's what they did. And um, so they suggest I join the police force. So I've become a police cadet. You could do it then without any education. I passed a basic entrance exam, two years as a cadet, five years as a customer. An incredible experience. Um, when I started the police cadets, I, I basically look, oh, Anthony, um, yeah, oh, one of you guys are back, you could just watch the time for me. I'll just go on, I'll run forever. So <laughs> when you got about an hour, just, just start to wind me up and keep me on track. Um, yeah, so, so um, when I was in the police force, I, look, how I heard about karate, I, I, I'd always, I thought, I thought karate was breaking things with the side of me. I didn't even know it was self-defense. I didn't even know there was punching or kicking involved. And I thought it was just some skill or power that you somehow could develop. And if you would callous get this massive callus on the edge of your hand. And as a young kid, I was impressed by that. And I heard about karate probably when I was 14, 15, 16. And, and I saw something in a magazine about karate and breaking things. That's why it was in those days. And, and so I just forgot about it. And I always thought, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Imagine now I have that power, you know. Because I was, always, I was interested in magic tricks and ventriloquism and mystical things, you know. So I, I uh, 
I basically, in the early days of the police force, totally unrelated to the police force, because it wasn't the police thing. It was just, I met this guy, cut him on a story short, who did jujitsu, who heard about this karate guy, just come back from Japan, his name was Bert Oakley, and if I speak to a lady called Pat Harrington, who's a jujitsu master, she would put me in touch with So I, I contacted this guy, invited the pub, two pound membership, and four shillings a class. And I went and watched the class, it blew me away, I thought, wow, it was totally different than what I thought, but it still was powerful and magical. So I joined the club and started training a couple of times a week, then three times a week, doing home training, made a lot of friends in karate, karate became so much a part of my life. My mum and dad lived up in Goldstone, 50 miles away, on boarding in Sydney, I used to travel to classes, and uh, my whole life, my focus was karate. Uh, I'd leave my police work as in the cadets in the afternoon at 4 o'clock, classes would start till 7.30, but I'd just hang around the place and it wasn't working in trouble, but I'd train all the way back to Bondi, I didn't have to go to Wentworth for, for classes. So basically, yeah, my whole life, I'd bring a buddy in front of the work in a carry bag, and, and um, that was my life. So, and, and I, you know, just like now, there were people joining the and then dropping out, and, and I saw that I was sticking at it. And I realised I was, I, I had stickability, and I had, and I, I was feeling a bit more special, I was asking them to, teaching classes, so, so my sense of confidence was growing. Um, and and I, I also think that, you know, we're all insecure at the end of the day. You know, like really, um, we are, as a human being, there, you know, unless we find security uh, in something deeper of spiritual value, um, where, because we are a human being, and we're going to be out of here one day, one day you know, and not you know, on this planet, there is a degree of insecurity in our life. This is natural. Um, and, and sometimes people are more insecure because of things that happen. So even at my age now, I still was a part of the way back is the kid at school got beat up, you know. I don't let that burden me really, but I'm aware of it. And it's, you know, and it, so you don't necessarily unwind from those things, but you just climb through it and other things build up in your life. So, so basically, karate did give me a lot of confidence in helping that way. Um, look, at the, I had an amazing amount of experiences in the police force. I didn't want to be stuck in a government job all my life. Karate grew to the point I wanted to be involved in karate more and more. The karate magazines I was getting from America were talking about a guy called Chuck Norris in America, who was a tournament champion. There was Tony Tullinus, Alan Steen. Aaron Banks, all these guys, you know, got the Bruce Lee, you know, and, and, and I, I want to go to America and meet these guys. Or well, maybe if I go to America, I can even go to Disneyland, which I've heard about. You know, wow, that'd be cool, you know. On the way to America, maybe I'll stop in on Hawaii, which is part of America. But, you know, I can sort of, you know, so, you know, in Australia, and maybe some New Zealand, like back years ago, maybe even now, America's a bit of a magical place. There could be some fun there, and it is. Um, and so I was inspired to quit my job in the police force. But look, in the police force, I saw some amazing things, saw some sad things, uh, a couple of brief stories. I remember walking the beat down in George Street in the city once, and I saw some um, a, a paddy wagon, a police paddy wagon, backed up to a jewelry shop, but to a fur shop. And uh, the police were loading furs in the back of a paddy wagon. I said to the sergeant, what's going on? He said, this off constable, it's got none of, you, none of your business, I was a bit suspicious. Went back to the police station, three, four, five months later, big news, police were, have been arrested for, for taking advantage of the fur robbery. The place had been broken into, but the cops went down there and finished the job off. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, two, of my, two of my karate students in the class I was teaching, um, I remember teaching a class at Kuti one night. Um, Paul Mill and somebody Taylor, these guys were just nice guys. Back in the LSD drug sort of era, you know, it was probably, what would have been, 1968 or something like that. Um, I go to, I go to work and the big buzz is there's been some drug dealers being caught. They're down in the cells down at the bottom. 
I want to go and see it. So I went down there. And these are two guys I've been talking to the previous night, like writing students, I've been arrested. Headline <laughs> news. <laughs> doing it. So I don't know what happened with them. Uh, 